Um, hi. So, I'm not very good at this. I have never made a video of anything of myself before. So hopefully, with what I'm about to talk to you guys about, I don't start crying. Um, I want to talk to you about Huntington's disease, what it is, and exactly how it impacted me. Everyone's been on lockdown since last month. I've basically been on lockdown since January. And I'll tell you why. My mom has Huntington's disease. For those that don't know who that, what? I'm sorry. It is like 3.48 in the morning. And that's why I'm quiet. Because I don't want to wake anyone else up. Um... For those of you who don't know what Huntington's disease is, it's a neurodegenerative brain disorder. It basically kills the brain cells in your brain from the inside out, in a way. It affects your behavior, it affects your psychiatric behaviors, it affects your movements, your motor skills. Um, it can cause you to have difficulty walking, talking, swallowing. It can cause you to have hallucinations, make you irritable. It can cause you to have insomnia and moments of bipolar or mania um, and OCD. Um, so basically when I, I, how I learned about this was through school. I went through nursing school. I graduated in July, um, as an LPN and I had heard about it one day in class and I couldn't help but sit there and think, wow, this sounds a lot like mom because mom had the movement problems. Mom was having movement problems for years. It started out as twitching in her fingers and then it went up to her hands and then her arms and then her legs got involved. Um, she started having trouble walking places. It wasn't necessarily her tripping over anything. It was her basically kind of walking funny. It looked odd. It was not normal for her. And it caught my attention immediately. Um, she started having head bobbing, head nodding. It was kind of like, like stuff like that. And obviously this wasn't normal for her, so... I got concerned. I kept telling her to go to her doctor to get it checked out, to ask questions to, because at this point, mom was still independent, could take care of herself. She was not very persuasive. I guess I wasn't very persuasive or anything because she never went and actually got it done. Um, Huntington's is genetic. So I'm pretty sure it was her mom who had it. Or it would be my grandmother. Um, each child of a Huntington's patient has a 50-50 shot of having it. Which means I could have it. My brother could have it. We both could have it at the same time. Or we, neither of us could have it. Which would mean that the disease would end with her. Once she passes. Um. It doesn't skip generations because the genetic code, everyone has a Huntington gene. What the disease is, is they classify it as a CAG and then you get a number. Mom's CAG is 41. What that is, is how many times a certain protein on this gene in her DNA is repeated. It Hers was repeated 41 times, which is a defect in her DNA. Um... So basically, mom was born this way, and we had no idea what anything about any of it. She started having mood, like mood disorder. She would have moments where she would laugh inappropriately at things. She would cry at sporadic moments. She would get very emotional. She would get go from very emotional to very like she would start laughing at something within a few minutes over. I don't know could be anything um sorry I'm sitting on my foot um 
but what got me was the forgetfulness. She was forgetting how to do simple tasks. She was forgetting how to balance her bank book. She was forgetting simple things. We went, we went out to buy gifts for her family. She picked up a book. She was like, oh, this is cute. Younger family. She was like, oh, this is cute. She put it in a cart. Five, eight minutes later, she picked up the same book and said, oh, this is cute. And I had to turn around and tell her, mom, you already picked up that book. It's in the cart already. And it wasn't even forgetfulness that was really starting to worry me. She started staring out into space a lot. Now, not a lot of people would sit there and say that that's necessarily a problem. Well, for mom, it was because mom never did that. She would stand in the middle of an aisle or in the middle of a store or in the middle of the house or sit on the couch in the dark and stare off into space. And when it started becoming sitting on the couch in the dark, it got a little scary, a little creepy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but yeah, you walk into that and not expect to see her there, yeah, it can kind of startle you a little bit. Um, I had told her repeatedly to go get checked out by her doctor. I had told her multiple times to go get checked out by her doctor, but she's a very headstrong woman. Um, finally, she got an MRI done in December and nobody was really looking for anything. They're looking for maybe a stroke or something like that, a brain tumor or anything. They didn't really see anything. Um, so we continued on. January 24th, she came home and it was awful. She kept repeating the same sentence over and over and over. It was something about work. Um, and it just, it was abnormal. She couldn't talk about anything else. She couldn't have a normal conversation. And I didn't realize this, but the Thursday before that Friday would be the last time I ever had a normal conversation with my mother. I'm not going to be able to talk to her about how my day went and have her understand I'm not going to be able to tell her about when I graduate next month and I'm probably not going to be able to have her there she can't leave the house as of right now I'll get into that later I'm trying not to cry <laughs> um anyway after that Friday I took her to the doctor on Monday because, you know, medical personnel besides the hospital are never open on the weekends. Um, he took about eight minutes to look her over and told us to go to the ER. Um, we took her to the ER. They were expecting her. They looked her over. We were there for over five hours. They drew blood and urine and said she was fine, didn't have anything wrong with her and sent us on our way. I had told them I suspected Huntington's. They basically told me that I was wrong and to get on my merry way. Um, he looked, the neurologist there looked at her MRI that was done in December. That's not very helpful in January on the 27th when it's been all, over a month since she had it done. Um, he basically said she doesn't have a stroke or a brain tumor so she's fine. I'm like, how would you know? It was a sudden mental change. That's very disturbing in itself. I didn't think it was a stroke because her face was symmetrical and she was not having slurred speech. She was not having any pain anywhere. She didn't have any weird feelings anywhere. She could still walk sort of normal. Um, we'll get into that later. That Friday, I had her I had taken her to the neurologist because it was just, it was not normal. Um, that's when the day she also got tested for Huntington's. Mind you, this test does take two to three weeks to get back, which is not good because that takes about that long until you can actually get approved to get into a hospice until you can get approved to be on disability because you need that confirmation paper to say that you have this disease. Mind you, when we took her to the neurologist on Friday, she, um, she wasn't normal. You could obviously see it because he's seen her before and 
I told him everything that happened, everything that was going on. I told him about Monday when we took her to the hospital that Monday. Um, and that's when I told him, I said, I think it's Huntington's. I want you to bring up her MRI from five years ago because she had a stroke five years ago. And I said, I want you to compare them and I want you to tell me I'm wrong. I want you to prove to me that I'm wrong and that I'm overreacting about this. And he did. He brought them side by side and it was a stark difference. It was as simple as black and white because it was black and white. It was very obvious that there was a part of the center of her brain that had died. And you could see it. My dad could see it from across the room. And he just couldn't say anything but, oh my God. So we ended up trying different, I'm pretty sure we tried different medications at this time, but we weren't entirely quite sure. Um, I had called hospice in on that weekend because I didn't know who else to call. She was running out of the house without shoes, without socks, without coat. It was raining. It was freezing. It's the first week in February. Um, it would be February 1st. Um, that entire week from that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, January 30th until February 2nd, I had gotten no sleep. She didn't sleep for four days, so neither did I. Um, I was also working. I am a night nurse. I work from 11 p.m. to 7 in the morning. So it was very difficult, but I made it through. That Sunday, I called out because I had to call an ambulance for mom. Mom had ran out the side door. We had gotten her back in. She was standing, and then she decided to slide to the floor and start crawling on her hands and knees around the kitchen and into our living room. Um, as a 22-year-old, this is very scary and very disturbing to see. I cried so much, and this was when my dad was begging her not to leave him. But I had called an ambulance because I couldn't get her off the floor. Um, she spent a week in the hospital. Um, the charge nurse didn't think she was gonna make it because she went from 112 to 104. She didn't eat for five days. Um, so that's when she really started dropping weight. Um, she was discharged, I think, that she went, she was discharged on the 9th, so she got put in on the 2nd and was discharged on the 9th. Um, her leaving was a really big, hard problem to deal with. I'll explain that later in another video if you all want it. I can go into more detail later. I don't want to make this video super long. Nobody will watch it then. Um. February 14th, mom was diagnosed with Huntington's disease. Um, and that's when we learned that she had a CAG of 41. And I was really hoping it was a lower number, but the higher it is, the more earlier the disease can show up in a person. Um, So basically all the way after that, all the way through up until now, mom's been on so many different medications to try to, I'm trying to find the right word. We were trying to find a happy medium for her. There's no real happy medium for anything that's been going on. Um, On March 13th, mom was 86 pounds. And that's when I panicked. I was panicking before, but I was really panicking now. Um, I was trying to get her to eat anything and everything. She was refusing to eat. I could not make her eat. She had stated beforehand, before anything happened to her mentally, that she did not want a peg tube. She did not want to be resuscitated. That, um... 
she basically just wanted to be let go the most natural way possible. And for someone who wants to keep her around, that's not something I was very happy with, but I am trying to respect that as best I can. And when doctors are sitting there telling you that I have full authority to go over that and put her in a hospital and have a peg tube put in, makes me feel uncomfortable because that's not what she wanted. Um, mom likes to make a thing about holidays. Because February 14th, she was diagnosed. And on March 17th, St. Patty's Day, mom forgot who I was. This normally doesn't happen, but it can. Um, with Huntington's, mom forgot who I was and she just was staring at me thinking I was some other kid. She kept telling my dad over the phone, we picked up a kid off the street. I don't know who this is. And she just, she wouldn't let me sit near her. She wouldn't let me touch her. She wouldn't let me hug her. It was, I cried for three days straight. I did not work. Um, I was extremely upset, but I, at the end of it, just said, this isn't her. Um, this entire time, mom's been physically violent off and on. She's been known to kick, punch, scratch, bite. She slapped my dad and punched my brother in the face. Um, not full force, but enough to like jar you. Um, this was all while we were adjusting her meds, so it's very hard, very disturbing. Um, I never ever thought I would have to see any of this. I never had, it just caught us all by surprise. Um, because you know, like four months ago, mom was fine. December on Christmas, mom was fine. But mom had said on Christmas that that would be the last one. That she thought that one was gonna be different than the rest like the rest of them afterwards were going to be different and of course you hear that and you're like what makes you say that and they're just like oh I don't know I just can feel it well she wasn't wrong and that terrified me um so yeah mom is currently 80 pounds as of yesterday um it's getting very hard to keep her home. We have to tape our windows closed because she keeps trying to get out the window every so often. Um, I just, it's exhausting. I have very little time where I've actually slept in my bed for the past three months because mom doesn't like sleeping in her bed. She likes sleeping on the couch, but mom also likes to wander around at night. I. I'm afraid she's gonna fall. She has fallen already multiple times. Um, she gets easily bruised because she's very little. Um, so I usually sleep on the couch. I am currently not sleeping in my bed at 4 or 6 a.m. because I really need to make this video. I have tried making this video multiple times. I have deleted and re-recorded it probably over seven times already. I'm never satisfied, so I'm probably just gonna upload this one because enough's enough. Everyone needs to know what this is. Everyone, since everyone is home because of the virus. Um, I'm sure people will see it and it might go around. People might share it, I hope so, because it needs to be talked about. It's a horrible disease and it's rare. I'm just wondering how many people are running around undiagnosed because it's not very common, like not very commonly known. So no one knows what to look out for symptom wise. Um, I'm going to start a donation and I hope people donate. And if no one can donate, that's fine. Just share the video. If every, 
if anyone wants me to actually go into detail about what's been going on, what's happened, I will gladly do so. I will gladly go into de more detail about what Huntington's is, if anyone really wants to know. But I'm trying to cut this video short because it's already been like 20 minutes. I'm sure people don't want to hear me ramble on for another 20 minutes about something they don't care about. If about that. I'm very tired. It's been a very long three months. Um, at the beginning, I said I have been in quarantine since then because mom cannot be home by herself. So basically, I had my brother switch his hours around so he works during the day and that way he'd be home at night if I had to go to work, which I'm PRN now, so I don't have to be there. I can pick up when I can, which is great. And I'm very glad that my job has done that and I can't even begin to express how much I appreciate it, but I really want to start a donation because not everyone's lucky to have someone medically inclined in their family who knows what they're looking for or happens to notice something that looks familiar to them. Um, not everyone has access to medical facilities. Not everyone can go to the hospital. Not everyone can afford doctors. Not everyone can afford MRIs, which is why I want to raise money. I'm going to be sending pretty much probably all of it to um, the Huntington's Disease Society of America and I'm going to be donating it to families in need. Um, half of it if mom's still around by the end of the donation period um, will go to helping mom or part of it will go to help mom. The other of it I'm going to send to them because there's other families that need it. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't really know what to say at the end of videos. I'm not good at this. Um, I'll be praying for all y'all and please keep in mind that these people are immunocompromised. I'm trying to stay away from everybody to keep mom from getting sick because I don't want her to go downhill any faster than she already is. Um, so, social distancing. FaceTime people, guys. Um, I know it's very hard, but I've been at it longer. So, give it your best shot. And hopefully you guys learned something or at least found this interesting. I'm just jabbering at this point, so I'm just going to stop.